Hi, my name is Joe Morita. I design and develop consumer and commercial products. Um, I've been involved in milk crates for the last 55 years. I've been involved in every phase of it, the design of crates, the design of the molds, the building of the molds and the molding of the crates. Through the years, I've had the uh, uh, advantage of going into the system at the dairies and evaluating it and recognizing its problems and uh, studying it for quite some time in many dairies. In doing so, okay, uh, I uh, came up with uh, many problems. To give you an idea, This is the crate as, as designed right now. Okay. As you can see, it has two ends, two sides, and a bottom. It's molded in one piece. Okay. That okay, creates many problems. First being mold cost and part cost. In order to control its problems, it has to be a certain weight. Okay. The weight of this case is approximately three and a half to four pounds. What it does, okay, it restricts you to material use. You can only use two materials, that being polypropylene and high density, polypro uh, high density polyethylene. Some people blend in a regrind, and some people mix the polyethylene, uh, polyethylene with high and low densities. In order to control this, okay, in molding, okay, the restrictions involve the cycle time. You cannot mold this fast. It has to be molded within 60 seconds. Anything faster would create distortion. Some people, to combat that, use a shock system to relieve the stresses. Some people use a water bath to relieve the stresses. In my molding experience, I never blended any kind of regrind or mixture. Always used virgin material. The case, okay, gets a lot of abuse. People sit on it, okay, people use it for their particular use and then it's back into the system. So the process of putting it into the line of the dairy, there must be two inspectors at the beginning of the line to check the distortion to make sure that it will not interfere with the system. It also uh, has a big problem with regard to pilferage. The statistics show that a hundred million dollars collectively across country is lost by the dairy for pilferage. All kinds of people, nurseries, uh, gar uh, uh, fruit packers, vegetable packers, all kinds of people steal. Not steal, I don't want to use the word steal, but uh, uh, take them. That hundred million is not only a loss by itself, but now that also all these cases have to be replaced. So you're talking two hundred million dollars minimum. Then you also have loss from actual usage, where they're distorted and they can't be put into the line. Some breakage and what have you. So you can see the cost of the dairy is tremendous with their loss. I have experienced molding this here. And in doing so, okay, had to be very careful, okay, in order to get the uh, product to the dairy uh, as desired. My designs, okay, will eliminate most of these problems, okay, if not all. I have. Uh, 
one prototype, design number one, in wood. And the reason why I made it in wood, it was complicated to do it in plastic since polypropylene and polyethylene do not adhere, okay, being polyolefins. So I made it in wood just to show the concept, to prove the concept. And what I have here is a product that is molded flat. And it has five pieces, a bottom, two ends, and two sides. Now what this does, first of all, it reduces mold cost. It's not as costly to make the mold. Second of all, it will reduce weight because you're not concerned about distortion anymore where weight was a problem, you had to have the proper wall thicknesses. So it, it reduces the weight, which reduces cost. And the second, uh, the, another thing it does, transport, uh, transporting cases to the dairy in the form of it is, that it is right now, only gets 3,553 foot trail. This will allow it to be palletized, allowing more product being put into the trailer. But it, it also eliminates hand loading of the trailer. As the form, in the form it's right now, the cases have to be put three pieces together and hand loaded into the trail. With this design, that's all eliminated. Now, it's not the answer to it all, but it does reduce cost and a lot of uh, problems to the dairy. So, the next thing that I did, I'll put this over here, was go to step two. Step two is a, part, a case that is molded in three parts, as such. Now again, this reduces mold cost considerably, reduces uh, weight of the crate, reduces uh, piece cost, it reduces the handling of, of uh, uh, loading the trailers. So it also allows uh, more product to be put into the trailer. When it gets to the dairy, the case, okay, is put in this position manually. Okay, because, by the way, all these here designs blend with the existing part, existing cases. So there are always two people on the line, okay, putting the product into the line. The case is put up like this by hand. It is then strapped with a band like this, or film, whichever the dairy prefers, okay, strapped into a lock position, allowing it to be put into the system. Now there's a sensor at that point, which separates this form of case or the old form of case. When the old form of case is put into it, the sensor does not activate the strapping. So this here, okay, as, as seen, I think is the, the best there is for the dairies. It can be minimized in, in weight because of the way it's molding. And it, it also, uh, reduces cost tremendously. This is done in both the 24 and the 16 quart versions, okay, which are used by the dairies. So the biggest problems that dairies have, okay, are number one, pilferage. Number two, normal breakage during the system, okay. Number three, okay, warehousing. The way the case is formed here, it takes a tremendous warehouse to keep these cases in, in flow. With this design, the warehouses are, are minimized because everything is palletized now. Okay. The necessity to pick up these cases at the store locations, okay, uh, is eliminated. 
because I'm sure there are a lot of recyclers out there that would contract with the dairy to pick up this product, okay, and regrind it and offer the dairy a price per pound back to them, okay, rather than the dairy going through this process, which they do now. They have trucks out there picking them up. The trucks that deliver have to pick them up. That's all eliminated. It's all gone. I have a third version, okay. And that's this form of case right here. This is completely biodegradable. It's made of a quarter inch coated corrugation. It comes in a flat form to the dairy. The trucking can either be absorbed by the manufacturer of the cottons or the dairy can pick them up themselves. Once it's received at the dairy in a flat form, it's kicked up and stapled in case form. It has two corrugated pieces at the bottom to form a rail for transporting on diamond plate in warehousing and in trucking. Now this here design, although it's the ultimate biodegradable and preferred, it does have cost disadvantages. Okay. The cost could be much higher than the previous design too. The flat okay, would have to be adjusted if during the process of, of determining whether or not it's acceptable, okay, to increase strength in the corners so that the cases do not crush, okay, in the process. They have to stack five high with filled product that's about 300, 400 pounds. That has to be developed first before they can actually get into it, so just to check things out and be sure. But it's my opinion that the cost of this would be much higher than the cost of the previous design. This case, okay, as designed, can also be used in the beverage and food industry. This presently is the case that's used by Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola for two liter bottles. It comes into the user, it's wrapped, the pallet, with plastic, but once the wrap is removed, all kinds of problems are created because the weight is not supported by the cotton itself the way it is, because the weight is on the cotton itself. They crush it, but if, it, if it's raining, where, wherever they store it, okay, there are problems, many problems. I've taken this design, which first of all reduces the cotton, uh, corrugated being used. Second of all, it allows nesting because the parts on the bottom which are made of the same material, this is only a prototype, will captivate the bottoms and nest and stack okay, in an orderly fashion. When wrapped, okay, it goes to the uh, user and the wrap is removed, it'll stay that way, okay? It is warehoused, okay, with no problems, okay? It has hand holds, and again, it reduces the carton, that, the corrugated that's being used. This also can be used in many, many products, many food products, okay, many beverage products, okay? It's one that offers a lot of opportunity. My next design is a water bottle. Water bottles for many, many years have been like such, okay? Now, in order to consume this, you have to take this and your head goes back to the maximum. I gave much thought to this to see how I can improve this here bottle. And with a lot of thought, I came up with only the one area that could be changed. And that was the spout. After much development to get the right angle, I developed 
and offset the spout 30 degrees. Now this was the first prototype, and I, I designed in stages with prototypes because it proves things out, corrects errors that you may, may have made. I made an error on this, that one dimension, it was a, a, a quarter of an inch too large, okay? And this is what I got. So I had to make a change. But it did prove out the angle. You take this now, you drink it like so, and you have an eye level. Okay, you don't have to go back anymore. So it's a big advantage for vision. And it's also a big advantage, human engineering, you don't have to bring your neck all the way back. I've taken that, and I've gone to the next plastic prototype, which you can see is actually the design that it would be, okay? And that, again, gives you what we have right now. This can be used in all sorts of beverages and many other products, okay, that, that, that need pouring, okay, uh, 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 with this type of spout. So all of these things, this I have a patent, United States patent registered. Case one, case two, I have a patent, United States registered. And this case here, I have patents pending, which I expect to get an allowance within the next month for these. This is my designs. I have here a sample. It's called Terra Stone. Now this, as you can see, it's a dolly, and it's used for a lot of load on it, so it's very strong. This material is a mixture. Okay, it's in a range of 29 to 39 cents a pound. Half the cost of the materials used in the other designs. The only problem here, I don't think it can meet the demand. I don't think it can meet the volume that is required. But it should be considered and looked into. As I said, they call it terror stone, and I have all the information as to who, who does the manufacturing. Now, what I'd like, if anyone was interested, okay, to fax me at Joseph and Loretta, fax number 973-646-8851. Give me company name, contact person, phone number and fax number that they can be reached at. And I would like to thank you and wish you a happy holiday and a happy and prosperous and wealthy, healthy.